Greetings. This is the Kenyan teacher once again presenting Guy Lussac's law, the law of combining gas volumes. Welcome. Now, did you know that, that this law usually refers to Joseph Louis Gay Lussac's law of combining volumes of gases? This law was discovered in 1808 and published in 1809. The person behind this law is one Guy Lussac who was born in the year 1778 and died in 1850. He was a French chemist and physicist. Now you know. Let's then proceed to statement of the law. Guy Lussac's law states that when gases react, they do so in volumes that bear simple ratios to one another and to the volume of the product only if the product is also gaseous. Temperature and pressure are taken to be constant while we are measuring these volumes. Let us now proceed to try to break down the meaning of this law into simpler terms so that our students can be able to understand what we mean. So consider the reaction represented by a balanced chemical equation below. Now I want you to notice that nitrogen is a gas, hydrogen is a gas, and ammonia is also a gas. So all our reactants and our one product are all gases. So from the balanced equation, we take note that one mole of nitrogen needs three moles of, ammon of hydrogen, sorry, and we are able to produce two moles of ammonia. In terms of volume, one volume of nitrogen will need three volumes of hydrogen to produce two volumes of ammonia. So if we pick a volume like 10 cubic centimeters for nitrogen, we shall then require 30 cubic centimeters of hydrogen to obtain 20 cubic centimeters of ammonia. These ratios are 1 is to 3 is to 2 obtained from the balanced chemical equation. So in simple terms, in Guy Lussac's law, the mole ratios or the balancing figures are taken as volume ratios provided that the volumes are measured under the same conditions of temperature and pressure. This is the simpler explanation to our law. Let us now proceed to testing trends at Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education. KCSE by the Kenya National Examinations Council. That is NEC. Guy Lussac's law has been tested four times as presented in this table. All these times it has ever come in paper one and the maximum marks awarded per question has been three. We now take this opportunity to take you through the four questions as described in our table. We begin with the year 2011, chemistry paper one, and that is question number 25. So in the year 2011, chemistry paper one, question number 25, part A asked us to state the law. And this is simple. We have agreed that the law states that when gases react, 
they do so they do so in volumes that bear simple ratios to one another and to the volume of the product formed only if gaseous and of course and of course at constant temperature at constant temperature and pressure that would give the, the learner the first mark then part b we are being told 10 cubic centimeter of a gaseous hydrocarbon with the formula C2HX required 30 cubic centimeter of oxygen for complete combustion. If steam and 20 cubic centimeter of carbon 4 oxide are produced, we are being asked for two marks to find the value of X. So here, a student was supposed to start by writing the equation for combustion of our hydrocarbon. So when you burn a hydrocarbon whose formula has been given as C2HX in excess oxygen, we are supposed to get carbon 4 oxide and steam. So from here, we put in our volumes which will act as our mole ratios as well. So we've been told 10 cubic centimeters of our hydrocarbon needed 30 cubic centimeter of oxygen and we produced 20 cubic centimeters of carbon 4 oxide. From here, we are able to get mole ratio. 1 is to 3 is to 2. So our mole ratios will be 3 moles of oxygen requiring 1 mole over the hydrocarbon to produce 2 moles of carbon 4 oxide. From here, we can see that our equation is balanced in terms of carbon. On the reactant side, carbons are 2. On the product side, carbons are also 2. Now let's proceed to oxygens. On the left, we have 6. On the right, I have 4. But to balance, I need another 2 on water. So I will balance my water with a 2 so that I'm able to get 6 oxygens on the product side like I have 6 on the reactants side. From this balanced equation, we can see that hydrogens are 4. Hydrogen atoms are 4, so it means that on the reactant side, I will also have to have 4 atoms of hydrogen. And for that matter, X is 4, which means the hydrocarbon we burnt was C2H4. That answers our question. One mark for your balanced equation and one mark for getting the correct value of X. Totaling to two marks for part B. We proceed to the year 2013. Guy Lussac's law was also tested in question number 23 for another three marks. So now to 2013, chemistry paper one, question number 23. It read that when 15 cubic centimeter of a gaseous hydrocarbon, P, was burnt in 100 cubic centimeter of oxygen, the resulting mixture of course gaseous occupied 70 cubic centimeter at room temperature and pressure. So when this gaseous mixture was passed through potassium hydroxide solution, the volume decreased to 25. So the student is supposed to understand that when you burn a hydrocarbon in air or in oxygen, because we don't know the formula, let's suppose it is CXHY. 
when we burn it in oxygen we shall get carbon 4 oxide and steam or water one thing we need to know is as i pass the mixture through potassium hydroxide carbon 4 oxide would be absorbed and the steam or the water that is here will be condensed to form part of the solution so let us bring in our volumes here we are told 15 cubic centimeters for our hydrocarbon for oxygen it was excess but of course the original volume was 100 cubic centimeter now how do we get volume of carbon 4 oxide that was produced the hint lies in the question we are told the resulting gaseous mixture this gaseous mixture consists of excess oxygen and carbon 4 oxide remember we shall not take care of steam or water because it will have condensed into the solution so we are told that this mixture here was 70 cubic centimeters excess oxygen and carbon dioxide. now when you pass it through the alkali we are told the volume decreased to 25 what does it mean it means after all carbon 4 oxide was absorbed by the alkali we remained with only excess oxygen which occupied 25 cubic centimeters so from there we now know the volume of excess oxygen and we can also tell the volume of carbon 4 oxide by subtracting uh, 25 from 70 and that gives us 45 cubic centimeter now our first question is asking what volume of oxygen was used during the reaction now we started with a hundred excess was 25 so it means the volume of oxygen that was used was 75 cubic centimeter for our one mark then Question 2 is now asking us to determine the molecular formula of the hydrocarbon. Here now we shall need our volume ratios to help in getting the mole ratios. So our hydrocarbon we used 15 cubic centimeter. Our oxygen we used 75 as obtained in part A. And our carbon 4 oxide we used 45. Simple ratio here would be 1 is to 5 is to 3 if you divide by the smallest volume of 15 so let us now see how to balance the atoms of each element on the right i have three carbons so it means x has to be 3 now let me proceed to oxygens to help me balance hydrogens so on the left oxygens are 10 on the right i have six so i need four from my second product water so i'll balance here with a four and that now gives me the number of hydrogens on the right as eight which must equal those on the left so for that matter y is eight and therefore your hydrocarbon has the formula c3 h to max one for balancing the equation and another one for getting the correct molecular formula of the hydrocarbon this was a bit complicated and i believe our students have seen how have been able to maneuver the question we now proceed to the year 2020 again chemistry paper one question number 25 2020 chemistry paper 1 question 25 we are told complete combustion of one mole of an alkanol with the formula CXHYOH gave four moles of water 
we are now told to determine the values of x and y. So here, as usual, a student is supposed to write a balanced equation for the combustion of our alkanol. Alkanols, because they are still made of carbon and hydrogen, you still get carbon dioxide and water. So we are told here we only used one mole of our alkanol and we were able to get four moles of water. So how do I answer my question in getting the value of x and y? First thing that I can easily get is y because Hydrogens are already balanced. On the right, I have 8. On the left, I can see HY and 1H. So, I need 8 in total here. So, I already have 1 here, meaning that Y has to be 7. So, 7 plus 1 gives 8. That will be equal to the number of hydrogens on my right-hand side of the equation. Now, how do I get x? To get x, I will have to borrow from the general formula of alkanols. Alkanols have a general formula of Cn H2n plus 1 OH. So I'll compare this middle part with my H7 so that I'm able to get N. The moment I get N, I'll be able to get the value of X. So in short, 2N plus 1 representing H in this middle part should give me 7 because Y we have just found to be 7. From here, 2N is giving me 6, that is 7 minus 1, and n is equal to 3. So when n is 3, I can tell x is now 3. Good. Question part B is asking us to calculate the number of moles of oxygen required for the complete combustion. So here, I will need to write my equation with now the value of x and the value of y having been known. So that is C3, H7, OH being burnt in oxygen to produce carbon, 4 oxide, and steam or water. What has been balanced with a 4? Now, let us now balance the carbons. I have three on the left. I will need a three on carbon dioxide to balance. Two oxygens now. This is six on the right plus four, making ten. On the left, I only have three. So I already have one in my alkanol. I need nine from oxygen. And the best I can do is to do nine over two here because we are told we only burnt one mole. I do not want to interfere with the one mole of alkanol being burnt in oxygen. So for that matter, we shall balance with a fraction, 9 over 2 on oxygen, and therefore moles of oxygen become 9 over 2 or 4.5 or even 4.5 for the one mark. We finally end this video by looking at the year 2021 question number 15 which again tested on Guy Lussac's law 2021 chemistry paper 1 number 15 state Guy Lussac's law this one we have done more than once so when gases react they do so in volumes that bear simple ratios to one another and to the volume of product if gaseous. 
and of course at constant temperature and pressure. That is one mark to part B. 180 cubic centimeter of nitrogen 2 oxide was reacted with 400 cubic centimeter of oxygen. Write an equation for the reaction. Nitrogen 2 oxide is a gas. Reacting with oxygen is a gas. We shall get nitrogen 4 oxide, another gas. Of course, we balance with a 2 or nitrogen 2 oxide and a 2 or nitrogen 4 oxide for one mark. Now, this question asked us to calculate the total volume of the gases at the end of the experiment. So to answer this question, we shall rewrite our equation of cost balanced so that we can get the volume ratios. Two volumes of nitrogen, two oxide needs one volume of oxygen to produce two volumes of nitrogen, four oxide. So here we have 180 from the question of nitrogen, two oxide. We shall only need 90 for oxygen because the ratio is two is to one. Remember oxygen we were supplied with a whole 400 cubic centimeter. So we have a lot of excess oxygen in this case and we expect to produce 180 cubic centimeter of nitrogen for oxide going by our ratio 2 is to 1 is to 2. So to answer the question let's start with volume of oxygen used. This would be 180 divided by 2 as we have done here and I get 90 degree 90 cubic centimeter sorry that earns me the first half mark. Then from here I'll look for volume of unreacted, unreacted oxygen. This is 400 minus 90. It gives me 310 cubic centimeter. The next half mark, from here, I'll able to get volume of nitrogen for oxide produced. This we found to be 180. Okay, the next half mark. Then finally, I can get the total volume of the gaseous mixture. This will be 180 for nitrogen oxide produced added to 310 of excess oxygen. And this gives me 490 cubic centimeters. So half mark for the addition, half mark for the final answer. The remaining half mark, because I see it's three marks, would be given for the correct volume ratios. Totaling three marks. This time round, NEC didn't follow their usual pattern of questions in paper one, having a maximum of three marks. This time we had a maximum of five marks for question 15. With that, we've come to the end of our video where we have reviewed Guy Lussac's law. We have also given you some history about the law. Wishing you all the best and please keep it here for more.